Hey party people, how's it going? It's your man DJ Fernando G inviting you to hit the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell as well so that you don't miss one episode of DJ to DJ. That's where I talk to amazingly talented DJs from across the nation and they tell us how they got started in the business. Plus, coming soon I'll be doing some tutorials as well as talking about my experience on radio and how you can become an on-air DJ mixer. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button, click the bell, and I'll see you on the flip side. Today on DJ to DJ with Fernando G, we welcome DJ Joe Bon. DJ Joe Bon. Talking about how he got started and how he's building an up and coming DJ empire expanding to six cities across the nation. Plus, how he's helping DJs from around the world through his various platforms. Let's welcome DJ Joe Bon. What up, party people? Welcome to episode three of DJ to DJ, and it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you my brother out in Raleigh, North Carolina, DJ Joe Bunn. How are you, man? What's up, my man? How are you? I'm doing good, man. Doing good, man. I'm just really jazzed to have you on board here and uh, be chatting with you a little bit about how you got started in the biz and how you created the, the empire that you are building now, my friend. The empire, I it, like that. <laughs> it is truly an empire, man. Because when <laughs> when people start hearing what you're doing, man, it's 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 wild. It is kind of wild. You're right. It's been a long ride. A long ride. That's good. Hey, so, we. The, I'm not say, seeing the record icon here. We are recording. Yeah, right? yeah. We, we, we're recording. We're 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 up and <laughs> like. If we have a great conversation and you say I forgot to hit record, which no, I've no. done before, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we're up and running. What, what I see on my end, you don't you don't see on your end. But, okay, but we're, uh, I'm we're, like this guy's got a radio background, like he yeah. knows what he's doing. But I just need to make sure. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're rolling, we're rolling. So um, let's start off with your beginnings, man. You started off in uh, at the age of 14 mm -hmm. over there in North Carolina. Yeah. So how, how, I think how did I was you get 13, 14, yeah. and uh, just uh, you know caught the bug early. Really didn't even know technically what a DJ did, but there were so few people doing it in my town that, uh, and there were these little teen kind of pop-up parties, you know, that your parents would take and drop you off at. Right, right, right. And we always would make fun of the DJ. And I was like, man, I, I surely can do better than this guy. Right. And, you know, I, I, I guess eventually we ousted him and, you know, started taking my parents home stereo, Morant's <laughs> home stereo and setting it up. And, you know, that was the start of it was just doing those, those teen club parties. And then a guy, you know, went out of business and, um, or he didn't go out of business. He sold me his business because wow. he wanted to become the golf pro instead of the local DJ. Local DJ. <laughs> and, and I was like, I'll take it. Trailer, equipment, a couple contracts he had with Toyota of Wilson. And oh, wow. Next thing, uh, next thing you know, I'm, I'm off to the races. Nice, nice. So you, so you came in with the full package. It wasn't like us where we were hauling crates back in the eighties and and all that stuff. I mean, you you it, got it, it all. It, it <laughs> there was uh, there was some of that going on, but the I remember I think I had one turntable in that trailer full of stuff, and then these huge, um, they weren't even carpeted PV speakers. You know, they were almost like that fake leather. Leather, yeah. On the side yeah, of it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of peeling and popping off so i think i eventually just skinned them and spray painted them black and it was it was quite the scene Classic. trailer was super homemade that is funny that is funny yeah yeah so um how did you learn to beat mix what was your your you know, go-to that great, that's a great question and I, and i dj'd man i dj'd a long time to be honest with you, before I knew how, um, I bet I played, let's see, um, 10 years, uh, maybe, maybe seven, seven to 10 years before I really knew how to mix. And mm -hmm. I, I moved, I went to, I went to, I, I graduated from high school in Eastern North Carolina. Then I went to Carolina, uh, University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill here also, you know, in the, in more towards the middle of the state. And then when we graduated, we moved to the beach because we were going to start this mail order company. Nice. And we were like, well, if it's mail, you know, you, you can mail from anywhere. We might as well move to the beach. There you so go. We moved to the beach <laughs> and to subsidize this failing hat and T-shirt business, I started, um, you know, DJing again. And I was playing in, in like these bars, not really clubs. They were more like beach bars and downtown Wilmington, you know, 
bars. And I met this guy and he was like, man, you, <laughs> you, you know what to play, but you're just not really playing it right. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, I don't know. That. You know, and, and back then there weren't, yeah, there were mixtapes you could buy and stuff, right. but um, literally mixtapes and people were just kind of still, even then were just kind of dropping beats in the ones I listened to, you know, the hip hop guys and stuff. Right. And he was like, man, just let me teach you some things. And, and so he taught me, and this guy's name was uh, Tim T dog is what he went by. And, you know, and I, and from that day forward, I always had gear set up in my house and I would practice, 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 and just That's get crazy. better and better and better. And, you know, and then, you know, the end of the week would come and you would go on that Thursday, Friday, Saturday string. And, yeah. you know, you would go in there and <laughs> hate to say it kind of practice on a live audience, but, that was really the basis of it, you know, in my early twenties to, but it, it was something I didn't learn for eight or 10 oh, years. Wow, wow. That's wild. Yeah. So like, what would you say the biggest event was that you started off with your the biggest, when you first started that made you like freak out, like, Oh shit. Like, I it can't was, believe I'm doing uh, this. yeah, it would, it would definitely have been in college. I mean, those, those years, you know, from 90 to 94 were, um, really pivotal, really in every way, you know, m mm. music was changing, you know, the hair bands were going out and, you know, my, one of my favorite stories was I was in a fraternity there. I think I must've been a sophomore. So it would have been like 91, maybe 92, something like that. And <clears throat> there was a musician, a drummer in the fraternity. And he, he was, a you know, just a big music guy. And he came to my room one night and he was like, you want to go to the cat's cradle? The cat's cradle is still there. It's like a, a, every band that's any band coming up plays at the cat's cradle. And I was like, who's playing? And he goes, Pearl Jam. And I go, I hate the name. I'm not going. Oh my God. And I went, and then, you know, a year later, it's the biggest album in the world. Like, right. and I was like, is that the band that, that Wednesday night that, you know, you tried to get me to go see at one in the morning. He was like, yeah. You passed on that. <laughs> so, you know, the music was changing and Nirvana was big and Pearl Jam was big. And then there was all this like 90s hip hop, early hip hop, right. early 90s hip hop and, and pop. Like I remember like song Jesus Jones that right here, right now. I used to play that all the time. Right. But so you could play anything. And the fraternity parties were just legendary. You know, I started to I would start at 2 a.m. Wow. So the bars here close at 2 people would clear out of the bars. They'd come to the frat houses. The frat houses had basements and, and these big rooms and stuff, usually in the basement. Right. And they literally just had nothing in it, but a, a, a stage that could barely stand. And me set up on that and we would just rage, you know, until five or six in the morning That's and I'd awesome. go home, get back up at 10 and, and, you know, keep playing. But I think there was some sort of a homecoming, I think it sounds familiar. So it would have been the fall and just happened to be the perfect day. And there were three houses like on what they called like little frat court, which was still a huge courtyard. And man, I remember sitting up on the front porch of the house that I was a member of. And there must have been, I, I would hazard it to say 2000 people out in that wow. lawn. Dude. And, you know, I'm grossly underpowered. I think I had these these homemade like 18 inch scoops, oh, <laughs> <They> just, <laughs> you know, like today I would have had like a line array right, system. Like, right. th you know, th then I was, I'm sure it was like the first, probably, I don't know, 200 people were getting a, a great party and the rest were just like, what, what song is that? What is that? They were just hearing, but the, the to bass. me, I was, I was a God that day. You know? There you go, man. There you go. So you, what, what I admire, uh, now I met you, uh, a couple mm -hmm. of years ago over at Mobile yep. Beat, very briefly. Yeah, uh, and your there. brother. Yeah, my brother Jerry. We were out there. Right, Actually, man. Jerry was the one that introduced me to you. He That's was the right. one, like, you know, you got to meet Joe and this, this, and that. He was all excited, and we had just seen you speak, uh, you know, on stage and stuff. Yeah. And we went over to the Tropicana, to the pool area. Yeah. And they were doing some some sort of event there, you know, at night and stuff. Yeah. And he goes, come on, Joe, Joe's over here. And, you know, I met you briefly. We chatted and you said, hey, man, you, you got to check out the DJ's vault and it's going to be really cool. And I think you guys were just getting started. It was started. early. Yeah, yeah, it was early on. And, um, you know, so I, when I got back, you know, to Los Angeles, I started looking you up and seeing who you were and all this stuff. And I started getting blown away because more than anything, so not so much the DJ portion of it, but your creativity, man. 
Mm-hmm. Your videos. I mean, I was just like, oh, like, wow. What's he that, doing? Right. Yeah, this guy's this guy's out there, man. I mean, it just it sucked me in, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you know, I gotta follow this guy. I gotta see what he's doing. I gotta learn from him. So, you know, you you mentioned briefly, you know, that you you were in college and stuff. What is your educational background? Because I'm really yeah. intrigued at your marketing Not and that. Your, your vision <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> it was um. <laughs> It was the degree was called industrial, what was it? industrial, <laughs> industrial relation. I don't even, I was sitting there seeing if I had that. I don't even have, I don't even know where my degree is now that I'm thinking about it. I hope it's in my attic, uh, industrial relations. And what it was at Carolina, you had to reapply to the business school after going for two years. And so I had taken all these, uh, economics and sociology classes mm. But I think there was some economics class that just had me um, baffled. I, I feel like the guy didn't speak English very well, and the mm. material was very difficult. And so I withdrew from the class. Okay. I didn't fail. I took a W, and I, and I needed that to get in that business school. So all of those classes basically stacked towards this industrial relations you know degree basically that you got if you couldn't get into the Keenan business school. So wow. uh, it, it wasn't marketing. And, and what's funny is, you know, I don't even really know where that came from. I mean, my dad is not a marketer, you know, his, his company is a rope, you know, they make rope and cord and, you know, their stuff is super antiquated and <laughs> down to their <laughs> website and their paper brochures. And I've tried to help him a million times, but you know, it didn't even come from anybody in the family. It was just something I think, you know, that I was drawn to that I would see ads on TV. And, and, you know, I've talked somewhat about, you know, the inspiration behind some of the videos and, you know, it, there's, it's hard to, you know, (laughs) there's that saying, there's no such thing as an original idea anymore. And sometimes I think that, you know, and, but I'm always inspired just like, you know, uh, Oasis was inspired by the Beatles. You know, right. like I see things, I'll write down an idea or I'll save a video clip or a photograph and be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that one day. You know, what, what, that's that's what, how they start. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what I like about you because, um, you know, there's a lot of people and, and, and I've been, I've been like this. I mean, it, it took me a little while. I've been wanting to do this DJ to DJ thing for a little while now. And, and I was like, well, but what, but, 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 you know, and I finally, I just, you know, I just screw this. Let's just do it. And that's what I like about you because you come up with something and you just do it. You just make it happen. That's a great attribute of you that you got, man. It, it, it's a gift and a curse, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, because a lot of stuff you you get in your head and you're like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to mm-hmm. do this. You know, and, and like the like the T-shirt and hat business or even, you know, like a, for a long time, I managed bands and rappers. And, you know, you just you're just hemorrhaging money because yeah. <laughs> you think it's the next big thing. But, and ironically that, you know, going back to the vault, I, I, I had done so many things over the years, you know, I'd bought classic cars to drive brides away from their weddings. And I had had, you know, clothing companies and I'd managed rappers and I had got my real estate license. I'd sold cigarettes, I'd sold Red Bull and just all these kind of like in between hustles all, all the while DJing. Hmm. Um, but it always just came back to to DJing and and what everything that was successful I ever did was based around music or DJing. And when I had the idea for the vault, it was just kind of like a, a fledgling, you know what I mean? And again, you know, I'm 40, I'm almost 49. So this was last year, 48, mm. you know, and it's sometimes it's harder as you get older to come up with an idea that you think is going to work. But I remember you know, the first three pieces were those three um, videos I had been selling after I spoke, hiring the music, marketing the music, selling the music. And those had done well, you know, sold a few hundred total of those. I think they were like $99 each. And then, and then, so those were the first kind of things in there. And then I met that guy, Dominic, you know, that was really good at the Facebook advertising and he helped kind of blow it up. And but I remember before we went live, I had rented out the the basement of this um, hotel in Durham, um, which used to be a bank, and it had that vault, an actual vault in it, you know, because you can't take a vault out of a bottom floor of a 
you know, six story building. Right. And they, they would rent it out for like little parties and stuff. It was that big of a vault. And I remember I was like the day before I was like, Oh my God, dude, we're doing the launch inside this vault. As long as they've got Wi Fi, we're, we're, we're doing the launch in the vault. And I remember right before we started recording or going live, like we were counting down and I looked at that guy, Linus, that still shoots my videos. Uh, and I was like, this is going to be huge. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't know, man. And I don't think I've ever really said that and felt like the way I do right now, but I think this is going to be huge. And sure enough, you know, that night it was just like, people were signing up. Boom, boom, boom. Oh. Dominic was like, don't stop talking, keep going. Like, <laughs> and then it just kind of, you know, snowballed from there. I mean, there's, we have 1200 members now. Yeah, man. It's, it's pretty huge. I mean, I, I, it took me, like I said, I, I'm always slow to pull the trigger, you know, but yeah. I was just kind of like watching and I kept going into your, you know, what you were doing on Facebook and stuff. And sure enough, you know, when I went in there, I was like blown away. I mean, seriously, I mean, I literally, I mean, I've been DJing since the age of nine. Right. Uh, but I didn't start doing parties till I was like 15 and stuff. And then I was doing weddings and we're talking back in the 80s and stuff. And it wasn't until I actually got out of radio mm -hmm. that I decided to open up my business. Mm -hmm. And I've never, you know, my, my background has been more on air radio personality, production yeah. and event marketing for radio stations. So it was kind of a weird transition coming out of that. I was trying to market my business like a radio station which was completely wrong. Yeah, yeah. And so the DJ's vault is what put me on the right track to marketing it correctly. Mm. So um, let's talk about the, the DJ's vault. Mm -hmm, so for, mm -hmm. for the people that don't know who it is, I'm, I'm DJs here locally in Los Angeles yeah. that, that mm -hmm. may be watching, explain what the DJ's vault is. You know, man, um, it, it's one of those things where um, again, you know, it, it started with these three videos that I was selling. Uh, one was about marketing your DJ business. It was about an hour long, mm -hmm. but, but 20 minutes of it were these videos that you speak of that we make, you know, once a year. Mm -hmm. Um, the other one was about how we sell, you know, when we meet with couples and the other one was about how I find, you know, and retain, uh, good DJs, you know, like I think we have 18 here just in the Raleigh office. Wow. And so that was the basis of it. But then I had also written for Disc Jockey News, Mobile Beat, this magazine, that magazine over the years. I probably had 100 articles already written. So I was like, man, what's the probability somebody even saw that magazine? You know what I mean? So I'm going to put all these articles in there. And then there were all these like documents that we used at Bun DJ Company that were internal. Okay, let's add those. And now let me start bringing in all my DJ friends from across the country to give their take on certain things. Cause I certainly don't know everything. And that's when we started the webinars every, you know, pretty much every week or every other week, mm -hmm. you know, we brought in Mike Walter and Jason Janai. And then, you know, now we've kind of gone into people that aren't even DJs, you know, that, that can help DJs. Right. So we had those, you know, so you had all this content. I mean, there's in, in fact, I'm going through reorganizing now because it's gotten so big. I bet there's 400, 500 pieces of content in this yes. thing. So I'm, I'm currently in the process of reorganizing and kind of relaunching it for the members. And, you know, it's, it's because the last thing I want it to be is overwhelming. So I'm, I'm you know, as much as I love to, uh, to get new members, I want to make sure that the people that are there stay there. And, and we've done a good job of that so far, even during, you know, the mess that we're in now with, with yeah. people don't have a lot of money to spend on the subscriptions. And I've even preached to people like, look, if you're not using something, you know, whether it's a extra cable box in your house or, you know, you got Hulu and, and Netflix and you only need one, you know, start, start dumping stuff because mm -hmm. it's, we, we're, we're not out of the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be out of there for a <laughs> it, good it, it while. It ain't man. looking great right yeah. now. Right yeah, now. We, we shut down here in California again and I don't think we ever man. really got going to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So it, to me, what, what it was really inspiring because when we started getting cancellations and postponements and stuff, I mean, we were about to go that weekend, we were going to do a mm. bridal show. Mm. and oh wow yeah and mm. i was i was all jazzed up because through the dj's vault 
I learned mm. so many little things and stuff. Yeah. And I was prepared. I was like ready, ready yeah. to explode, man. I was like, even my wife was like, this one, this is going to be a good one. I really like the yeah. concepts that you came up with. And I said, I, it's, it's what I learned from the vault. She was wondering, why are you so investing so much money in this vault thing? And I go, now you know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Like, you know, and it was like, it, I was ready to rock. And then, bam, we get canceled. Mm. Mm. And I was like, oh, man. So then when the cancellation started coming in, boom, postponements. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm -hmm. shit. I'm like, what do I do now? You know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I still work for the radio stations in Las Vegas, but Vegas shuts down. So yeah. what I do for them, I mean, I was doing a mixed show. The nightclubs are done. So we don't got no more sponsors. So they're like, we're going to cut back. And we're going to cut back mm -hmm. on this. We're going to cut back that. So now I'm doing minimal work for them. Mm. And I'm thinking, okay, so what, what is my next move? And then you started talking about transitioning and, mm -hmm. you know, taking this time to better your business, to better your marketing, to look at everything that, I, that you started doing. And I, I started, I started doing mm -hmm. you know, like you, what you suggested, which was the crates, fixing my, my crates and all that stuff and my Serato. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what do I do next? What do I do next? And it was so funny because I'm watching you, you're on one of the, the Facebook live streams and, and you say, Hey, so what type of things are you guys doing to supplement your dollars? And I kid you not. I said, well, well, shit, I can record DJ drops. And I put DJ drops. And you put out there, hey, Fernando's doing DJ drops. Next thing you know, it, I start getting some messages on Facebook. Yeah. Hey, how much? How much? I'm like, yeah. holy shit, I, I got to make this happen. Yeah. And you were like, where's your website? I had nothing. I, right, I put right. that website together literally in two days to get you a link. I made some little rinky dink flyer, shot it over mm -hmm. there. <laughs> and I started getting business. And it's thanks to you. Because yeah, that yeah. moment That's that you awesome, said, what are man. you doing? Boom. And I was like, this is what I can do for right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, they're good too. Like I love mine. Man. Uh, thanks good. brother. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> and it, it, you know, I've been having fun with it. I've been getting, you know, requests for it and all. And, uh, this is the power of the DJ's fault. Mm -hmm. And, and it's astonishing to me because there's some, D I, I've talked to local DJs here that are still very skeptical. And I'm all like, sure. you've got to join the DJ's fault. There's a lot of, you know, important info. And the cool thing about it is that, you got, you know, information about marketing, you got how to deal with social media, mm -hmm. all these elements. So it's not just it's sometimes they, they kind of misconstrue and they think, oh, it's just DJs teaching other DJs how to mix. And it has nothing to do with that. It really doesn't. No, it, it's something much, much bigger and and constantly growing. It's community, man, really, at this point. Yeah, yeah. So you were also on the board of the International Live Events Association and National Association of Catering and Events. What was that like? I bro? was. I was for our local chapters, not the national ones. But yeah, um, man, I mean, again, both of those, uh, Nace and Ali, uh, are lucky that we, we have each here in Raleigh, which Raleigh is not even the biggest city by any means in North Carolina. Charlotte probably is. But we're lucky to have both of those chapters here. I've been a member for over a decade of each of them. And, you know, being on the board, number one, just being a member is important because mm. all the big, you know, uh, wedding and event people are players there. Right. And going to those events and networking and sponsoring, which means, you know, we set up a sound system. If there's a speaker, we play the background music when people are coming in. And even like volunteering to be on the board for whatever those couple of years that I did that for each of them probably. And I don't, I don't think I was, I was never like the president or vice president. I was probably communications or something of that nature, both times, or maybe events like mm -hmm. helping, you know, pick what we were, who we we're going to have come speak or whatever. Um, it, it just, it, I can't stress enough, you know, being a part of those, if you don't have them, you know, joining the chamber. Um, we yeah. talked about this a little bit on the webinar last night with a guy from out there and, um, livermore california i think he said maybe northern california northern, is where yeah. he was and you know and we were talking about he was talking about in this tri that tri valley area um that they didn't have anything for a while and he started his own and now it's got 700 members in it you know so <laughs> you know it, it's just one of those things where I, I believe so much in the power of networking and and yeah. being in those groups whether it's the chamber or you know the the business international groups or whatever it's huge, huge. Now, the other thing that's huge is the number of chapters that you have for Bun DJ Company. Mm -hmm. You're now in mm -hmm. what, six cities? Six cities. Mm -hmm. Wow. How, yeah. how did you build that up to, to expand like that, that? That's an interesting story because, you know, um, I don't really own them per se. I mean, they have my name on them. They're Bun DJ Company. But 
it, those people all worked for me at some point. Some of them hadn't worked here in 10 years, but you know, they approached me and they said, Hey, we, we kind of want to do what you do just, and I said, well, hopefully not here in this town because <laughs> right. it wouldn't be good. And they were like, no. And they were younger, much younger than I. And, mm. and, you know, most of them weren't even married or anything. And so they had the ability to go anywhere. So, you know, David went to South Carolina and uh, Frank went to Virginia. And, you know, then we kind of gave the Western part of the state to Brandon, you know, cause we didn't ever go that far three, three hours away and right. to the mountains is probably four. And, and then, most recently, my sister, you know, just sick of what she was doing, living out in Montana and in, in Bozeman, which is the, 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 the funny statement they're going around is this is the city where the millionaires are being run out of town by the billionaires. Like, mm. you know, her friends all work for um, Tom Brady and Giselle. I mean, her son's in daycare with, with Timberlake's son. Like, it's, it's like it's that kind of place, you know, where these – celebrities and and athletes and and tech you know gurus go to to get away from la <laughs> yeah or new york you know what i mean yep, so yep. and there's and there's so and it's gorgeous like it's you know yeah, Montana's five beautiful. months out of the year in montana is the, the prettiest place you'll ever go yeah, you know so beautiful. you know so she wanted to get in the game and and she's you know other than what happened this year she would have been doing great so mm you know, she'll hit the rebut restart button for 2021. Sweet. And you also have a, uh, there's an office in San Diego, correct? San Diego as well. Yeah. Sweet. It, Steven had not worked for me literally in a decade. And he saw, um, he kept seeing me post about, you know, the other offices and he saw me coming out there a lot. Cause I was doing videos with, uh, uh, Angel and, and Raj and those guys over at BPM Supreme. Okay. And so we reconnected and, and, you know, I, I kind of coincided the trips to BBM Supreme with helping him interview and hire guys for the office out there. So it all worked out. Sweet. Sweet. Now let's, let's talk about evolving the the vault and your DJ business. And now you got bun gear. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Right. <laughs> um, so bun gear, I, I, I always wanted to have a product or at least wanted my name on a product. I think I really probably wanted like, some sort of signature mixer, but I was never that good of a, <laughs> a mixer uh, or a, you know, a, a DJ or a scratch artist uh, or a turntablist, if you will. And so, and I was really just fed up with the way that we were setting up. I mean, still, even still, you know, plenty of my guys are just will show up and the six foot table is there and they'll throw their gear on top and listen, is the cord management to absolute perfection? You know, yes. You know, does it still look professional? Yes, but it's just to me, it doesn't match the brand. Yeah. So I started building, well, first I started building a fiberglass version that we called Vision DJ Designs. And that was probably about four or five years ago. We sold a few of those, very hard to build. Um, we were building them one at a time. One of my DJs is a fiberglass expert. Hmm. And, you know, it was just not, profitable quite frankly and just super time consuming building them one at a time and then and then we you know fo refocused we found somebody to engineer and build them in new jersey um just from some research that we did and so we made it out of this super lightweight aluminum and um and we we bought a run of 100 which we just sold the last one i think a week wow. ago of so other than uh, the last few that are still on their way to the people. And then I think we have like seven sets of bags, which were also made in the United States that, you know, that you carry this, this portable DJ yeah. booth around in, you know, the orders are fulfilled. You know, the question is what's next or would I place another run of a hundred? And I, I don't know, man. I, I mean, just between us and the people listening, I don't know that I would do it all over again. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was, because of the COVID thing, um, UPS was not kind to a lot of our products or oh, pieces. Sucks. Um, everything was delayed as you can imagine, yeah. you know, even, yeah. it, even though it was made here, you know, we had delays and the bag factory shut down and this, that, and the other, it, it's tough to say what the future holds. You know, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know that I'll miss the product business if I get out of it, you know <laughs> what I mean? Or, I think maybe if I did something else, it would be way cheaper 
which is what I originally set out to do. And it just mm. wasn't possible and maybe way simpler. You know what I mean? It, it would be maybe a sexier table or facade type thing. And it would come in under nine ninety nine. That would be my next goal. Well, knowing you, 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 I think you'll make reach that goal. I think I will. Yeah. I will. I don't think I've even really told anybody that goal. Maybe that's the big revelation on this podcast. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> so a couple of years, I also met uh, who is now a good friend of mine and has actually collaborated on my radio mix show in Vegas, uh, Aaron Trailer. Yeah. yeah. He uh, he and I met uh, when we were both part of the PVDJ take, takeover mm-hmm. a couple of years ago at Moby. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I met Nate and uh, DJ mm-hmm. Jess and all these amazing DJs from across the nation. Yeah. And it would... It was just really cool. And, and um, Aaron and I kind of hit it off. You know, he has a radio background. I have a radio yeah, background. And, mm-hmm. you know, I started doing this. Uh, I had just started the mix show in Las Vegas. And uh, I'm good friends with the owner of the station. He's all like, I need, I need your mix show, man. I need you to bring it on board. But I was doing my business and stuff like that. So I said, I, I can't be doing all the mixes and stuff. I said, is it cool if I bring in other DJs? As long as it's, you know, the caliber that you do, yeah. So when I heard Aaron, I said, I, I got to get him on the air. And then yeah. I heard Nate, and I'm all like, I got to get him on the air. You know, I got to yeah. get all these guys on the air. Yeah. So we started doing it. And Nate, Nate immediately, the program director says, I like this guy. I like his style. I you know, love the way he mixes, man. He goes, can you, can you make him a regular? I'm like, hell yeah. So boom, he became a regular. And oh, wow. then I started seeing his frame of mind and his creativity and stuff. And uh, he reached out to me when he started the original version of what is now Mm -hmm. crate hackers Mm -hmm. and you have now become a partner with him i guess let's 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 talk about that i mean same same kind of backstory you know i I knew aaron through mobile beat i was introduced to him uh and and he and his boss in nashville uh jason middleton Middleton, and i were talking one day great guys i mean and then during this quarantine, you know, Aaron locks himself in his house, much like you did, and builds this website called, like, Perfect, <laughs> I remember I hated the name, yeah. Perfect DJ Playlist or yeah. something like yeah. that. It was a little long. <laughs> and it was long, and it just didn't look great, but the concept was was there. Yeah. And I was like, man, you know, I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to get DJs organized, and you're trying to help them stay up on their music. And I think he was like, yeah, man, I don't really want to make any money, but blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, don't be crazy. Like, I mean, you, <laughs> you're going to spend a lot of time, you know, trying to keep up with this every month. Like, at least make a little something. You right, don't have to make it right. absurd. And I said, you know, plus that website's going to basically crash if we try and send a bunch of traffic to it. And so we moved it into the vault. You know, basically, mm. there's a T-shirt right there. there you go. And we moved it into the vault as like a kind of a sister product. And it just that I don't think we opened it, but four days and it just blew up. We signed up like yeah. 950 people just like that. Cool. And so we just hit the one month because I saw the rebuilds yesterday. And honestly, man, I think we only lost maybe 10 people out of 950. Sure. You know, so most people, you know, they see that second time rebuild and they're like, oh, I don't want it. I'm not using it. But right. if that many people are holding on, then I know that we have something yeah really it was definitely huge i i, I knew it was going to take off because when you guys did the uh the webinar yeah boom man the number oh, of was, people it was huge we, we crashed zoom, zoom yeah i mean it was it was uh, i mean it was one of the biggest way it was bigger than the webinar we did when we gave away the the dj right booth. you yeah. know like i was like we're not even giving anything away are we yeah yeah no, it was it was it was, huge. it was it was massive it was funny because I remember I, I, you know, I always put my timer on my, you know, to, to, you know, my little alarm to make sure that I, yeah. that I drop it, you know, get in on there. So I log into zoom and it's like, you're unable to log in. I was like, what? Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? And so I said, I hope it's on Facebook. And then sure enough, boom. And yeah, then it's yeah. like, everybody's complaining. Can't get in. I can't get in. I'm and like, I start dude, seeing the we, number. And I paid, we, it took me a month to get that money back, but we had paid $990 Damn. to zoom to upgrade our, our thing. But either there was some box we didn't tick off or we just thought that you paid it. And then and they, that was it. Yeah. It, and there was something internally we didn't click or something. And so, yeah, that was a nightmare wow. to start. But it ended up being a, a blessing. Yeah. I mean, not a blessing, but it ended up turning out great. Yeah, for sure. And, and it's something that, you know, is extremely helpful. 
Um, and, you know, and people definitely, DJs definitely got to check that out, you know, get yeah. themselves organized and good quality, uh, you know, uh, versions of their songs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's really cool. So what's up next for, for you, DJ Joe Bun? Man, you know, I'm sitting in here, um, and the last, you know, couple of months I've been trying to build out this, this studio. Um, so I built this studio and got this new graffiti vault mural behind me very cool i'm not i'm almost ready to show y'all but i'll i'll make a, a video about it soon and, and make sure that uh, it gets out but i just been trying to build this out as basically like a little content creation lab you know so mm -hmm. the white room where we used to shoot all the videos for the vault closed down during this whole covid mess mm -hmm. so we've got a white space in here i got you know one of the bun gear booths in here so we can do live streaming or just make mixes mm -hmm. you know, i got monitors here on the desk i got monitors in the ceiling i got all my lights set up over back there I got my podcast mic here you know um, about to order a new computer i've been hanging the acoustical phone today like every day i'm in here just doing you know another thing and and it's and it's not even 500 square feet it's just a, a room with you know hard you know white everything and and you know a big graffiti mural just wow. But it's been already we we shot that video that I posted today here, you know, edited it right nice. here on the fly. Um, you know, we shot all the, the merch pictures for Cray Ackers and the Vault in here yesterday. You know, it's just so easy to walk. My office is right down there and to walk down the hall and all our lights are just, you know, in the corner right, already right. on the stands. Like we were having to load up everything, drive 25 minutes, you know, out towards the airport here in Raleigh, set it all back up in the white room. You know, by the time we started shooting, half the time it was lunch. Yeah. Now we just walk down the hall, two steps, unlock the Bam. door, turn the lights on, and start firing off shots. Yeah. Sometimes it's a blessing when these types of things happen. You know, and it's like, yeah. you, know, like you realize, oh, shit, why didn't I think about this before? You why know? didn't I? Yeah. And I was paying, of course, to go there yeah. as well. So. Yeah. No, well, that that's huge. And what I what I also like about you and your organization is that you really surround yourself with very talented people, like Dom and you mm -hmm. know the video mm -hmm. guys. I mean, you guys really come up with really great quality productions that, like I said, that you know it sucks you in, and just you know your creativity is is insane. Thank so you. Um, it's just it's been a blessing to have you on here, brother. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Of course, oh, yeah, one, man. one thing that that we didn't talk about was uh, yours and Mike Walters' podcast. You know, oh yeah, I mentioned talk about yeah. that as well. You know, for the DJs that are listening, if you if you don't uh, listen to it, it's called the PhDJ Podcast, the PhDJ Podcast, and it's wherever you would listen. You know, on, on Apple and um, SoundCloud and all the main platforms. I think you can find the podcast, but you know, we're 184 episodes in now, I think. I guess wow. the new one probably came out today. Uh, it usually comes out every Thursday morning. Uh, Mike does the editing and drops them on Thursday morning. And, you know, we just cover all sorts of topics. What's going on currently, you know, what we like music-wise. Uh, we, we know we had a club, more of a hospitality DJ on last week to talk about that side of the, you know, situation he's dealing with. Every week, you know, it's usually like the day before sometimes, uh, sometimes it could be the morning before and somebody will be like, yo, I just saw this topic on, you know, this, this DJ group, let's talk about this, you know, so sometimes it's just last second, we'll, we'll, we'll make the determination of what we want to talk about and mm -hmm. it always flows. So it's 30 minutes every week and we've been doing it now for three and a half years. So um, we have no plans of stopping. So hopefully you guys will keep listening to it. And if you um, are just finding it for the first time, please uh, become a fan, go back and binge listen. Yeah, man. It's, it's good stuff. And the DJs mm -hmm. that are starting off right now, definitely got to check. It oh out. man. Yeah. Critical yeah. for them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, once again, brother, thank you so much, man. Mm -hmm. I know you're, you're an extremely busy guy. You're always on the go. And for you to take the time to talk to me, I just, a blessing, man. Seriously. Yeah, seriously, man. Thank man. you for having me. Seriously. Appreciate I appreciate you, you man. Looking and, forward to seeing you in the in the real world. Yeah, right. You know, hopefully we'll 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 catch up at Mobile Bee. We still got to do that breakfast, man, that we had talked about. I'm man. down. I'm yeah. still down with that. I love I I love uh, anything sweet for breakfast. Don't give me the go. like. Yeah, I don't want the bacon and eggs. I want like the sweets. Uh, okay. so, all right, sounds good. I remember yeah. that one. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, and for those of you guys watching, man, we really appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make click that bell so that you get that notification of when we're up next with DJ to DJ. Thanks again to DJ Joe Bun. We really appreciate you, brother. Thanks a lot, mm -hmm. man. And Thanks, make, guys. 
make sure you check out the links below we're gonna have the links to all the the websites and everything for for joe's uh connection dj vault crate hackers and all that kind of good stuff appreciate you guys stay safe